Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Let me turn you to Corinthians back because Paul kind of had a few questions that the church at Corinth had been asking him about this whole heavenly body thing, you know? How's it going to work? What kind of bodies are we going to have? And how's this whole scene going to come down? And this is important for our faith. Really important that we latch on to the hope we have. I mean, we have a great... Guys, we, we have such a great hope. We're going to be upgraded so good by the Lord. We're going to be changed from these old bodies into new bodies, heavenly bodies. And so we pick up where we had to stop last week. In verse 49, we read this verse. It says, Just as we have borne the image of the earthy, this physical body, so also we will bear the image of the heavenly. And then it says in verse 50, you might want to highlight this verse, one of my favorites. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. This body this body can't go into the heavenlies the way it is. Jesus' body, when he was on the Mount of Transfiguration, we saw when we looked at that a few weeks ago with Moses and Elijah. What happened to Jesus' body when he visited with those two fellows that had come from heaven? His turned radiant white and shine like this, brighter than the sun. Like it says his garments, whiter than any wanderer on earth could make them. He was transformed right in front of them into that heavenly image. I go, guys, I can't wait. This is going to be, talk about one good cleanup. I'm going to fix up all my messes, all my blemishes, all my, it's going to be all fixed by the Lord. And just as you bear the image of the earthy, guys, Paul says the earthy comes first, but then comes the heavenly. This is the hope of our faith. He says, and behold, I, he says, then he says, you can't, Flesh and blood can't inherit the kingdom of God, and nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. We can't take on this imperishableness in this perishable body. This thing is meant to be laid aside. But he says, behold, I tell you a mystery. You want to hear a mystery? A spiritual mystery? Listen to this one. He says, we will not all sleep. In other words, he's talking about that, that's the old way of saying we will not what die we will not all die he says but we all will be changed hey you like this one we all will be changed for in a moment in a twinkling of an eye the last trump will sound and it will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we will be changed in an instant guys this is so fast it's a twinkle of an a twinkle you know what a twinkle of the eye is? That, that's light refracting off of a glimmer, or just a, a little flash of light as it refracts off your eyeball. That's a twinkle of the eye. What, 186,000 miles per second is the, is the speed of light? It's pretty quick. Okay, a twinkle is not even a snap. It's faster than a snap. It's like, bink. I don't even know how fast to make a twinkle. It's so, just so quick. It's the speed of light, just a little... Off your eye, and that's it. You're changed. Now, do you think we should teach kids that someday this is what we have to look forward to? The upgrade's going to happen, but how fast is it going to It's going to be like a slow m metamorphosis like the Hulk, you know, when he gets mad and he slowly turns green, and it takes a while, and his muscles bulge out, and then his shirt tears. And nope, sorry. That's too long. That's way too long. It's going to be a twinkle of an eye. Boom, you're changed. So some people say to me, well, Pastor, I'm going to get it together with God when I hear the trumpet. It's too late. I mean, unless you can outrun a twinkle, you don't got time. you're not going to have time to repent, is what I'm trying to tell you. When that trump sounds, you, the, the, the transformation of the church will happen all at once. So quickly that the people are sitting there going, I'll wait till I see it. Or, you know, I'll get ready as I hear the sound, you know, kind of thing. Sorry too late you need to get ready now so that when it happens you're included don't be foolish about this get ready now 
He says, in, he says, for this perishable, verse 53 says, it says that it must put on imperishable. This mortal must put on immortality. Do you understand? We got to be changed. He says, but when the perishable will have put on the imperishable and the mortal will have put on the immortality, then will come about the saying. Oh, I love this saying. This is, by the way, Isaiah 25, verse 8. The saying is, death is swallowed up in victory. Death is no longer going to have its victory. Oh, death, where is your sting? Hosea said that. Hosea 13 there, verse 14. Oh, death, where is your sting? You have no more power, no more stinger. Sorry, stinger. You just, it's like taking a bee and plucking the stinger out. No more, cannot hurt me. Death cannot touch you again. It says the sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved, he says, be steadfast, be immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, and knowing that your toil in the Lord is not in vain. Whatever you do in the, in the work of the Lord is not vain. It's not empty. You're going to be, Jesus said, he's going to say to those, well done, good and faithful servant. When I was hungry, he gave me something to eat. When I was thirsty, he gave me to drink. When, when I was sick uh, or imprisoned, you visited me. When I, when, you know, and, and it says that we're going to answer in Matthew's gospel. It says, we're going to say, when do we see you sick? When do we see you hungry? When do we see you thirsty? And what's Jesus' answer going to be to his sheep? When you did it to the least of my brethren, you did it to me. When you did these things, don't be fooled. Everything you do in, the, in, in toil for the Lord, you're going to receive a reward. Now, I know that God knows we're reward-driven. I'm sure of it. We're just wired for treasure. We like the idea. Jesus said, don't store up treasure on earth because moth and rust destroy and thieves break in and steal. You know, you can really work hard to get treasure down here and poof, it can be gone so quickly. But Jesus said, store your treasure up in heaven. Why? Where your treasure is, what will also be there? Your heart. And he knew we were wired for treasure. I mean, some guys are like, but I, Pastor, I, I find these shows really interesting. You know, like the, the, the guy who's trying to find the gold from the treasure of the shipwrecks that this Apollo guy was up in space going around Cooper's treasure. He was an astronaut and he looked from space and he's photographing the earth as he flies over and he's noticing shipwrecks in the Bahamas and he's not telling NASA that he's actually taking extra pictures for himself like let's go treasure hunt after this you know but he literally went you, you, they have it on the on the learning channel I'm, I'm not making this up and yet I sit there watching with fascination this is so interesting this guy was a I mean I looked up you know as a young boy to the whole astronaut program that was all going on when I was a young man and and they're flying up there in space you know and go, going to the moon and coming back and and this guy is supposed to be taking pictures looking for some kind of you know Russian you know nuclear type uh, advancement you know that the commies might have against us so he's up there supposedly looking with super technology that can sense metal and stuff from space I still want to get a hold of what machine did they use I mean, that's one big, you know, electro, or whatever you call it. I don't know how they did it. Still don't know, but, but I'm curious. Anyone else think that would be a good metal detector to have? You know, that they could detect from space some, something. But he was like, oh, hey, by the way, look, there's a big shipwreck right there, and there's another one. And he's like, got the super cameras from NASA, and he's like snapping pictures galore. And then he leaves it to this young prodigy, this this man that is taking those things and now trying to go find the gold and the treasures and, and, and finding the names of the shipwrecks and, and their manifests and all that. And I go, wow, it's really interesting. Now, why would we waste our time watching some guy search for treasure if we weren't wired for treasure? Does anyone think it's kind of enamoring that they could only find, you know, $50 billion worth of gold in one chunk of, you know, treasure chest type thing. I mean, the, the gold that was in one of the manifests, he goes, this is billions, not, not millions, billions in gold that they're trying to find. I go, 
okay, that would solve a little bit of our church finance deficit. You know, just give me a couple of the coins, you know. These guys, and they're, it's treasure on this earth. Problem with it on this earth is thieves can break in and steal it. Moth and rust can destroy. You, you, you can't keep treasure here forever. But whatever treasure you put in heaven. I told the boys this morning that were helping me set up, let's go store up some treasure in heaven. You know, when you do your work to the Lord, the Lord says, I, it's like you did it to me. I will repay you. Don't, don't be fooled. Paul, Paul knew that sometimes we kind of grow weary of well-doing. We forget the very last, look at verse 58. Don't forget this verse. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast. Be immovable. Immovable in what? Immovable in your faith. Always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your work, your toil, is not in vain. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo and God bless.